<laughs> Audrey! Hello, what are you doing? Hello, you listen to Six Weeks, you're going very well. That's probably the uh, the oddest start to uh, to any show we've ever done. Yeah. I'm Russell Howard. Audrey's this. made you look all right today, <laughs> though, aren't she? We were just talking about uh, Anchorman. That, oh, what's the yesterday? That will always put you in a good mood. Mm. If you're feeling low, watch a bit of Anchorman. Now, that is a rarity. You join us on a Sunday. John, not me, John has just spilt pineapple and coconut all down himself. Spilt juice all over myself. What's going on with you, mate? Well, I went to have some juice, and well, it no, went but, all over me. But you've never spilled anything, ever. I oh, know. It's, it's just a slippery slope <laughs> from here. Join us next week for cocaine habit. <laughs> nice. How are you, Johnny? Well, I'm all right. I've just covered myself in juice, but apart from that, I'm all right. Oh, oh it's you... Sunday. It's early, isn't it? It is. Now... I, I uh... avoided Angry Man downstairs this morning. Yeah, like if, sneaking in the side door. If you listened to the show last week, there was a, there was a man called uh, James. Angry it? Pants. And he, he was livid with us for uh, for daring to come in and do our jobs. But, Ooh. but, uh, never mind, because he's going to kill us when we walk downstairs again. I hope you're very well. I hope you're on a good Sunday. Email us on russell.6music at bbc.co.uk. Did you or, remember that? Yeah, just about. Wow, or, that is the first, I think we've done 40 weeks of the show now. Yeah. That is the first time you've remembered the email address. Yeah. Or you can text us 64046, any questions. <sighs> you'd like asked anything like that now john what's going on in your flat just before oh. we're about to start the show right how annoying is this we're just about to start the show and john went right hey there's something going down in my flat and i said well what is it wait till the show starts so i know we're in scotland and we've had a bit of a laugh about it but we have. there is genuinely a moose loose about to my house oh really i went to get a glass of merlot last night as a special treat opened the kitchen door and something pegged it under my washing machine it's either a mouse or a spider, so big and nimble that I don't even want to think about it. What, and what's your, um, everyone knows you're terrified of spiders, what's your reaction to a mouse? I was all right, I was a bit miffed. <laughs> miffed? Uh, yeah. Oh, was... that would be fantastic, just rigging up the fleece. Not that you would for a, for, <laughs> for a mouse, but uh, you were miffed, dear diary. Well, anything that's not paying rent shouldn't be in the house. And it's because it's I'm, I'm spilling bits of food and it's snuffling them up off the floor. But snuffling I don't them really, up. It just made me think, what well, if it comes out and jumps on my face? But I don't really, I find it impossible to picture mice without thinking of Stuart Little. Yes. So I imagine they can all talk and they're all cute and they all wear like dungarees. Yeah, I've got that image as well. Yeah, so I'm not too bothered about it, but I think the lady whose oh. house it is, she'll want me to deal with it. We had, um, a few years ago, the first one, we had a mouse cut in, in our house. And uh, the guy that came round, the pest controller, was incredible. Right? He was it was just bizarre because he, he was telling us what, the best way to kill them, apparently, it, they, they love peanut butter. Right. So if you smear things with peanut butter and then you stand nearby with, I don't know, some form of stun gun, then there's every chance you could get the mouse. He was telling us this. And then he went on to be really racist and it was a bit awkward. I don't want to kill the mouse. What do you want to do? Maybe I just do a trail of peanut butter out the front door. Yeah. Like, like uh, Hansel and Gretel. Maybe dress up as a big mouse, right? <laughs> Put peanut butter leading towards you and then dance the mouse off. That could backfire, though. What if I'm a hot mouse? <laughs> there is that. I hadn't thought that through. Yeah. What, what if you get on? There's every chance I'm a sex king That's in a the mouse point. world. Because you're so mentally damaged. Whoa. There is, that, there is that thing that if you were to dress up as a mouse and you and you got on well with this mouse, there's every chance that you just run off and live as a mouse forever. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that, if, if you got on really well with him and you thought, yeah. yeah. No, I'm not enjoying the, Edinburgh. No, I'm not enjoying the festival. I'm going to become a mouse. That has got to make the front cover of a newspaper, hasn't it? Well, Fringe star it, turns into mouse. Fringe, inverted commas, star. <laughs> Fringe stars. Mm -hmm. Now, we've had a text in saying perhaps John had had too much Merlot or a dodgy one and was hallucinating. I name that rodent Harvey. Much mother love, Simon. So Harvey, all right. Well, we'll call it Harvey. Harvey um, but no, I hadn't, actually. I'd only had one glass, and that was only as a special treat. Because I had a long day yesterday, and I worked hard. So I thought, I'm having a glass of Merlot. Well, Dag nam it. You had a very hard day, because as well as doing your Edinburgh show, apparently you were on BBC Three last uh, night. Oh, I didn't see it. Saw John on TV last night, someone says, confessing to loving Will Young. Well, uh, do continue, well, John. Well, there you go. That's, <laughs> it was a talking heads thing, which I should never have done. The most annoying moment. Apparently, you look like moments. a better-looking Kevin Federer, who went out with... Uh, not Federer. Uh, Roger Federer. No, Kevin Federline, who is the one that went out at Britney Spears. Right. Oh, so you well. may, maybe you'll have a rap <laughs> career in the future. <laughs> and look at her, she's fine now. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you love Will Young? Well, I don't Will know. I t you talk for like an hour, they just sit there and try and wind you up about yeah. music. And I'm all right about stuff, and I don't think you should complain about music until you've released a single, which I haven't. So well, I, that, you well, know. That's really not true. We've all heard Fun Time in the Shower. Uh, that's, a, that's a wonderful acoustic album. 
Go Do on. Remember, that song you were singing for ages, I'm John, this is how I wash. I'm John, this is how I wash. We used to listen to you when we lived together. Right. You should have released that. I did. <laughs> <laughs> just went straight down the plug hole. So what do you feel about Will Young? I can't remember. They, they've clearly just gone to me. I love it if they spliced it together, so it just cuts all the anger that you yeah. say, I love Will Young. I've obviously I've been doing witty repartee about yeah. something, and then they've mm -hmm. gone, oh, Will Young, and I've gone, yeah, I like Will Young. And then they've just cut it in behind a load of other people going, God, Will Young, what's that all about? And then they cut me in going, yeah, I like Will Young. And we're like, all right, idiot, but I do like Will Young. Okay. That Leave Right Now, one of the best pop songs of the last ten years. Well, here we are on Six and Music. Here. What is going on now? It's a great song. Lovely song. Right. I uh, like it. Oh, you are clearly evident. And anyone who doesn't like it, you're entitled to your opinion, but you're wrong. <laughs> now, uh, talking about uh, mice, we've got more uh, a mouse detection, because I said about peanut Oh, butter. Basil the Mouse Detective. What's wrong? You're just saying words now. Who's Basil the Mouse Detective? It's a cartoon series for kids. Right. It's great. You just thought you'd mention that? Well, I thought that's what you were going to say. You said we've got more mouse detectives. Well, I mm. thought that's where this was going. Well, you thought Basil the Mouse Detective yeah. was going to email in? No, it's a cartoon, mate. Right. But obviously, like, his mates might text him. <laughs> the big fat one who likes cheese. Does he? Right, um, we've got the mouse detection device. Apparently, you can put, um, a, f put a flimsy core corner shop bag on kitchen floor, place a piece of cheese on the bag, leave the room... Uh, you hear the rustling, the cheese disappears, you have a mouse. Time to bring out the big guns, says Phil, which is an exception. And then you shoot it. Yeah, that seems to make no sense. Um, morning. Peanut butter in human traps is all well and good, but in experience it takes weeks for them to take the bait, and then in the doing away with the mouse is slightly less humane than anticipated. Try the low-frequency plugs. They give out a sound that we can't hear, but that's too much for their little ears to cope with. See, I don't know how it's got in, that's the thing. Because I'm now shutting the kitchen door and I had to stuff a load of socks under the door frame last night because I didn't want it getting out of the kitchen and coming into my bedroom. Ain't no one allowed in my bedroom. Well, I am dressing up as a mouse and... Uh, you are? Why are you doing that? Infiltrating your house. Um, so I, I don't know. If I put a, like, a low-frequency plug thing, then it's yep. not going to go anywhere, <clears> is it? It's just going to be really angry in the kitchen because I've, I've locked it in the kitchen. And you're playing rave music, is it? But did it come in the front door? I would have noticed it coming in when I came in. I would have so noticed it queuing at the door. Yeah, I'm not so sure it thinks that. But I thought it's probably just got through a hole, I'd imagine. In the wall? Yeah. So I can't get rid of it, can I? Because it'll just come back in again. It's clearly set up home. Maybe it was there first. Maybe. Maybe it's telling its mouse. Maybe it's on Mouse FM now going, I've got some guy living in my flat, keeps walking in singing a song. Yeah. What can I do to get rid of him? Maybe you dress up as a cat <coughs> tonight. Dress up as a cat. When you hear the scrabble, 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 just start going... <laughs> Right. As loud as you can until you never see it again. Are you trying to push me into a breakdown? Because I'm doing all right. And so far this morning, you've suggested you dressing as a mouse and coming around my house, me dressing as a cat. So far, you haven't even been around my house. I keep cooking dinner on the table it was last night, piping hot, and then you get a text going, oh, you've forgotten, I've got to do something else. Now, we were talking about, uh, we're living in uh, in flats that we don't normally live in, because we're up in the Edinburgh Festival at the minute. And we were I usually live in a house. He does, yes. I've got a house. Which is very similar. Sometimes I just go upstairs. Where's John? Upstairs. And upstairs, dresses as a cat. <laughs> He's lost it. <laughs> Who's now, asking? No one. Now, um, I was saying to Ben and John beforehand. I miss Swindon. What's great? Wow, that isn't a sentence people say often enough, is yeah. it? Yeah. You should get a tattoo that says that. I did an interview on BBC Radio Swindon this week. Did you? It was absolutely the dullest interview I've ever done in my entire life. Oh, I can beat that. I've done some dull wars in Australia. Oh, really? Yeah. How's the Edinburgh that... Festival? Oh, it's too long. Ten to nine in the morning, that's not the question to ask. <laughs> I got asked, uh, I was doing an interview once in Australia about eight in the morning. So, uh, do you, uh, is it just you on stage? Or... <laughs> and I went, yeah, no, it's just me. I'm just uh, telling jokes. All right. Do you enjoy that? <laughs> I kind of went, yeah, it's good fun. Yeah. Fair enough. And that was pretty much the interview. It was horrific. And See it, you later. And it's that awful thing. It was kind of, do you, uh, do you want to do any of those jokes now? I know, probably probably wouldn't work. Coward. <laughs> and you saw us out there. Just no, no, Howard. Yeah, yeah, lovely stuff. But no, I was saying, it's one of the beautiful things about living with people, which I'm doing now, you're not doing. I haven't lived with people for ages. When their girlfriends come up, right, this isn't going there. I wasn't going to go, you can watch them. Back up a back up no, a it isn't like that. They smell lovely. But when their girlfriends come up, they bring with them wonderful things to use in the bathroom. 
Mm. Shower gels. Now, I think... Have you I, not been using shower gels? No, I don't... I've just been rubbing this cat on me. I don't bother with any of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's me. Sorry, John, I didn't realise. But um, I think Steve's girlfriend has brought up this stuff with Mandarin yesterday. Oh, my God. Rubbing it on myself. Wonderful. I, I was through my shower. I couldn't stop sniffing myself. Right. It felt great. Mandarin, indulge yourself, it said I did. I've got uh, summer fruits oh. <laughs> living next door. Um, John. Shower gel. Five a day, isn't it? Have a shower. You're right, that's got to be three every oh, five yeah, a day. You're rubbing fruit all over your body. The amount of fruit I was rubbing on myself yesterday. Right, so at least Steve's girlfriend knows where all her shower gel's oh, that, going now. That's Six quid a pop. That's the awkward thing. I didn't care, though. I just went crazy. I stopped putting loads on. I put it in between my toes and everything. Right. I wanted to be Mandarin. Right. It was great. It felt really good. If anyone's listening and you work in a shop where you sell, you know, shower gels and that, send some over. Right. I'm going to change my ways. It's the first time I've really used, like, you know, lady shower gels. I'm doing it again. Well, this is going to catch on, isn't it? what, their pants look lovely, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, so see- what did you have for breakfast? Imac? Overrated. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it was great. Do you ever do that? Steal other people's goods and use them? No, well, to be honest, if I go into my shower and find that there's shower gel that weren't there the last time I came in, I know there's been an intruder. I don't really have friends and their girlfriends staying at my house. Swings and roundabouts, though, isn't it? For every nice shower gel, you do just get woken up by inane couple chat. How are you, love? Yeah, whatever. That's you don't it. want that first thing in the morning, do you? Yeah, but see, I don't really feel like... Pretending to be happy. I'm feeling like a gooseberry, but I was with them yesterday, right? And she didn't know that I'd been using her shower gel. I had to keep my distance because I smelt good. And we were watching You've Been Framed for about half an hour. Now, how depressing is that? Here we are in the middle of the Edinburgh Fringe where, you know, new comedy and everything's demographically driven and I've got a show about tadpoles and I've got a show about love. If you watch You've Been Framed and you see a lady on a trampoline jump off and hit her head, that's the funniest thing you'll ever see. Don't think I didn't watch You've Been Framed yesterday. Best clip for me yesterday, a kangaroo kicking the crap uh, yeah, out of a chicken. Yeah, it was unbelievable. That's a fight you want to see. Properly decked it. Yeah, but just from nowhere, you're watching it and you're laughing louder than you'll laugh at any joke this festival. Yeah, I was incredible. supposed to be going for a run. Did Couldn't you get see, out of my house. Did you see the one where there was a there was quite a hefty lady? Yeah, they were always <laughs> slightly hefty. She was jumping up and down on her bed and her friends giggling <laughs> and she jumped up and then landed on the other bed, rolled over and absolutely hammered her head yeah. into the wall. And she just sat there laughing. And then every so often they cut in with the most horrific one of Oh, the guy like, white water rafted. Yeah, from nowhere. At Actually smashes his face full on into a rock. Yeah, exactly. And you're having fun, then you go, <laughs> oh my God, yeah, <laughs> she yeah. fell off the donkey. But, but it is exactly that. He's just seeing with a chainsaw <laughs> and his head comes clean off. And oh, that's a bit awful. Oh, look, there's a cat there playing with the swing. But for somebody, because it isn't done in front of a live audience, it's somebody's decision sat, at, sat in some studio somewhere to put big laugh, little laugh, ooh. Yeah. You know, on the different ones. I was thinking we're YouTube and that. It's, you know, you've been framed changing, isn't it? Like, yeah. they've got that mobile phone round now where you can text in videos off your mobile. Yeah. It's not the same as, like, well, wedding. That... The whole beauty of them is you know that someone trying to film their special moment and then Granny gets a bit tipsy and she lifts up her skirt. That, that was incredible as well. That, that I, I realise now we are mostly listing what happened yesterday on You've Been Framed. <laughs> but... I would have killed to have been there. There was a karaoke. There was a very old lady. She was halfway through her song and her teeth fell out. That is funny. We've had a very funny text in. So Howard likes Potter and Richardson's fond of Will Young. Are you sure you two aren't pre-prepescent girl boys? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm willing to check, but I'm pretty sure. Go on, check. <gasps> yeah. Well, that's not the result I was hoping for. Yeah, that's a tattoo. I blew it and it went back in. I like Mr. T. <laughs> um, hey, John, what's coming up in the show? Do you want to oh, me? don't even get me started. Well, the news quiz. Yes. Currently at... Now, well, what we normally do oh. uh, with the news quiz is um, I ask... It's basically true or false. It's, and we do it with somebody, a member of the public. But, John... We can't do it, do... can we? Why is that, John? Because everyone else at the BBC is a liar and now we're paying the price. Flipping Andre. Um, so we're going to do it against Ben, the producer, which is going to create attention for the following two and a half hours of the show, I think. But I'll take him on. Is it three all at the moment? No, you're losing five nil. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. I don't think so, mate. Uh, oh, but we'll assist. check. I've and re- then we'll do board games. So if you've got any board games, text them in on. 64046 <laughs> or email bbc.co.uk. Also, I think we might be doing a bit of Am I Normal later. Oh, but it's possibly the return. Possibly the I return. I had a big argument with someone in my show this week. Dun, dun, Set dun. me off thinking. Right. So, um, all that to come after after what? The news, John. 
And we're, we're, the reason why we're taking it quite quite slowly is because we're both very tired. But also, you're in a grump as well. I'm not in a grump. I'm just knackered. And also, there's a load of people who are waiting for their A level results. So they've asked us specifically just to be a little bit chilled. Also, so I was just sending a text. They went, "It was a wallaby in that clip. A kangaroo versus a <laughs> chicken would be a bit unfair, don't you think, DJ H Darlington?" We should be playing all B sides today then, if people are waiting for their A level results. Lovely stuff. Uh, well, it's the news quiz now, isn't it? Against against Ben, the producer. It is, yeah, because we can't play the home. Right. Yeah. Here we go then. True or false, and I'll do the scores. Um but to say hello, Ben the producer. Hello. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Sexy. What are your credentials, Ben? He's the producer, so if he's losing it can turn my mic off. Put simply. Fair. Right. First question. A couple in Dorset who use a speedboat as a floating brothel to lure customers from a nudist beach are being hunted by police. True or false? I think true. True. You both say true, you're both right. Yeah. Chinese man. How are you, Mum and Dad? You yeah, I went there, I said it. How dare you? I'm trying to get inside the Quizmaster's heed. How dare you? <laughs> There's a Chinese man, as we know, Mr. Bao. True. Damn it. <laughs> uh, Chinese man, Mr. Bao, has lost his title as the world's tallest man to a Ukrainian who is eight inches taller than him, but True. only recently discovered it. I know he was waiting when all this news happened, there was rumour, but eight inches sounds like, why would it need to be measured? If he was eight inches taller, they'd have just been at a look at them both and go, well, you're clearly taller. He's afraid of cameras. Is so he? So he was always in the distance. So right. Like, oh, he looks like he's eight inches taller. Okay. Perhaps he just slouches quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. He I'm going to go for he'll... false on those grounds, but false. I think it's true. Ch but... True. True, you're both right. To all. How can we both be right? John said false. True. No, you said oh, true. Right. I said false, but I think it's true. I was trying to spice the quiz up oh, really? going for the other answer. Okay. A woman in Germany who has spent 55 years with part of a pencil inside her head has finally <laughs> had it removed. <laughs> <laughs> what part of the pencil? The tip. Right. Um, she shoved it in once. She got really angry with herself. <laughs> it's halfway through a uh, spelling test and she couldn't spell perpendicular and just shoved it in her head. So right. these are the extra little bits that he adds on the back Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That makes it false. Yeah, that makes it false. And so Shurligan. Katoa. Yeah. Is that which... the noise Germans make when they stick pencils in their heads, is it? Yeah. <laughs> well, that is nine true. True. <laughs> yeah, that's his mystic. It is true. That's 3-2 uh, to Ben. Uh, right, his one. Isn't it 3-1 three, three to me, isn't it? No, no, 3-2. I'm giving You're taking him... us a bit seriously, Ben. Oh, oh sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. <please. laughs> I've been studying him over the last few weeks and with the little <laughs> tips that you gave me. <laughs> it's Mandarin, isn't it? It's lovely. Jamie Carragher, the versatile Liverpool defender, is a massive fan of Mario Kart. False. false son of a it's that little giggle <laughs> yeah when you're laughing when you say it we know it's false Mario Kart was ages ago he's uh, probably got an Xbox 360 now like a pottery shop in Norfolk is making celebrity ashtrays true true oh no I should have said false because of the smoking ban no one's making ashtrays now false is the right answer yeah. which makes it four if you've got three. an ashtray what you robbed off a pub ages ago then keep it because it's worth loads now they're going on eBay a little tip there. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit like car booty and all those other antiques programmes. I'll bet a you, bit more working class. I bet you were right, car booty, when you if were little. If you've rubbed an ashtray, keep it. My little brother used to do that, right? My brother used to go to car boot sales with my mum. I right? love car boot sales. Of course you do, you're a weirdo. On a Sunday morning, I can imagine you there with your big head. Mummy, can we go? Oh, very good, very good. Just clapping, just buying tat. You're an old woman. You're an old woman wrapped in an eight-year-old boy's... I can imagine you wandering around going, what have you got here? Have you got any owls? I quite like owls. eBay is to car boot sales what transnational companies are to local businesses. So I will support car boot sales, <laughs> you know. What if an old couple dies and one of them's been collecting porcelain pigs all their life? There has to be an outlet for that. And it's the car boot. Yeah, and it's you. And it's oh, porcelain pigs, I'll have five. No, I don't buy them, but I do buy kitchenwares and VHS. It's a good place to buy in VHS, because I still like videos. Something about a video, tactile, better than DVDs. What? No, it's not. Yeah, there's something about a video. Oh, come so, but, on. You know, it's just a generational thing, but I still like videos. And when you stop them, they stay where you are. You go off and do your videos. So there's a DVD. No, it doesn't. It goes back to the start again. You've got to go scene by scene. I can't. I've got stuff to do. What about cassette tape? What's he talking about? No, I still like cassette tapes. Yeah. Betamax. My brother. No, I do not. My brother used yeah. to. Yeah. Uh, wow. My brother used to go to car boots. We'll continue the quiz in a minute. He used to go to car boots and buy uh, medals. 
<laughs> like football medals. Well, that's always depressing. And then, and then when my granddad would come round, he'd show them off. Yeah, kind of go battling yeah. some snobbly knees. No, yeah, well, yeah, this uh, player of the game, that like this massive, ridiculous. <laughs> how comes it says Nigel on it? Granddad, get out of my room. Anyways, where were we? Uh, now we heard a few weeks ago about the cat that can predict death. Well, now oh. there's a dog that can predict the weather. Oh, false, 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 false. False? True. No, false. He howls for ages and then it rains. Oh, rubbish. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. True, true, true. Uh, true, true, true. Now, uh, criminals... Where does he live? Uh, Spain. Criminals have broken <laughs> into Legoland and placed several Lego people into compromising positions. True uh, or false? I'd like to think that's true. True. True, it is false. Oh, Would be good, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, it's in Windsor as well, so yeah. you imagine the Queen going, Look at that Lego man doing... <laughs> Philip! <laughs> and, then he, and Philip's just there dressed as a Lego man. Yeah. Come in, Mr. Boomba. Um, <laughs> Who think. wondered where I was last night? <laughs> uh, stickle brick. A woman in New York is in, a bo- is in a spot of bother with her husband after accidentally selling the ashes of his first wife for 58 cents at a garage sale. How do you sell false. ashes? Uh, True. To, to you. I should have those ashes. <laughs> yeah. uh, false. True, it is. So... 58 cents? Yeah. You'd get more than that for a dead person's ashes, wouldn't you? Well, that's if you were there, but bantering, maybe. Uh, I'll give you 59 cents. <laughs> uh, that is... Oh, I'm getting battered this week. That is it. I'm that getting is like, it. battered ah. like a Mars bar in Scotland. Fa- lovely touch. Final question. Uh, an eccentric tea shop owner is causing a stir by barring people who flout a strict set of rules, i.e. if they dunk their biscuits. That is definitely true. True. False. It is true. I knew that was true because it said, uh, it said causing a stir, which is a pun, and you would never have written that yourself. So that means you've lifted that right out of a newspaper. Too true, too true. So that means this week Ben's won. Right, so what am I, 4-3 or something now? That's right, you're losing. We've really lost the impetus of this quiz, haven't we? You got it's not the same with that list. Well done, Ben. <laughs> I'll go there. Yeah, <laughs> we're all very proud of you. But uh, We need listeners. If only people in the we BBC do need didn't listeners. lie. Okay, right. <laughs> Fair enough. Polly put the kettle on. We could, sorry, that, that may have sounded very weird to you at home, but we couldn't hear it. We really yeah, apparently to... they got ten seconds of cheering at the end of that record. Did they really? Which I don't think I've hit ten seconds yet across Edinburgh. Shut I've up. done about 15 uh, shows. Now. Gone about nine and a half seconds. Stop it now. You always shout at me. I listened through because... last week's show for the podcast, and every bit ends with you going, Stop it. Well, because I'm you're... not a dog. No, but you... Leave it. Put it down. Hey, that's another way you could get rid of that mouse. We don't do that indoors. Dress up as a dog. Right, I've no, been but, doing that anyway. No, but you do that thing, you always do that thing of going, no, I'm rubbish me, oh, everyone hates me, and everyone loves you. And it just annoys me. It's like seeing my little brother Stop it. moaning. I don't like to see it. I like to see you happy and confident. I told you about my theories about your hair. What? You go out, you have some lovely sex, and it won't be curly, it'll just be stressed, <laughs> you look like Emerson. Is that my first sex tip for this week? Yes, that's We're below it. sex tips in the podcast. That's yeah, embarrassing, isn't it? Yeah, well, sex tips is number six in the podcast. Is we, it? Yeah, we're Who's current... doing that? Is um, that not still Margie Clark? I haven't listened to it. <laughs> I don't need to. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, I, also, I just didn't want to download it. In Your case. girlfriend's been listening to it. I didn't want to download it because she's better than ours. Imagine that if they go. Um, but I thought it would be quite good to, for us to do some sex tips just to, just to pop ourselves up the ratings. So, what you got? Right. I don't have sex. Nice. I've got one here. I've written never make your own vibrator. Right. I think that's quite useful. Good. I have you it, tried? Once, and but luckily I did get onto an excellent episode of Robot Wars. <laughs> so that was good. I can only conclude, as a tidy man who's not getting any, that women love filth. So <laughs> a sex tip for men is to leave sweetie wrappers all over the floor and cack in the bed. That's John's. But here's another one of mine. Never engage in foreplay whilst holding a blowtorch. Yeah, well that just goes without saying, doesn't it? Yes. Unless you're wearing safety goggles. In which case, what harm can come of it? Well, you can melt her eyes and she'll be... No, safety goggles. She's wearing safety goggles. Oh, is she? I always keep a pair by the bed. Right. Um, So she's wearing safety goggles. maybe that's why I'm single. Okay. (laughs) You'll want to pop these on. Yeah, never do that. (laughs) Never just before you're about to sex say, you might want to pop these goggles on. Oh, I can't believe you're getting some when you refer it to about to sex. Did I say that? Yeah, do you want to go upstairs? We're about to sex. (laughs) It's your lucky day. What would be great? Yeah, actually, here's another sex tip. Never say, I'm about to sex with you. (laughs) Like, Um, you can't control it. Like, you kind of go, oh, I'm about to sex. 
I'm a, that would be a lot easier if we came into... See, I'm very much for... I was discussing this the other day with somebody, and they weren't really into it, but I'm very much for the idea of us being having seasons. I like the idea, you know, that you know, there's a month where women are in season. Rutting season. You're aware of it. Everything's red and inflamed, and, and, and you know, and you feel sort of red and inflamed, and then the rest of the, the year... I always feel red and inflamed. But you can go about your business, you know? You, you, you don't get these thoughts in your head whenever you see people in the street. Right. You know, I think that'd be easier. We kind of do have seasons. The summer is when everything gets all... Well, that doesn't mean anything. What and the that? winter is big the, stew. The, no, the, the summer is when women just appear from nowhere and you start sniffing them and muttering to yourself. Yeah, but women smell nicer in the summer. You're not allowed to sniff them. That's you enough. are, in passing. Oh. If they're going to walk past me in the street, they're bringing it on themselves. What? They could have crossed the road. I've given them options. Ugh, Mandarin. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> right, anyway. Uh, well, so that sex tip's covered there, that's, isn't it? So that's, that's pretty, pretty much, much revolutionised yeah, yeah. sex. Um, anything else I've got here? That don't wear tinfoil, never dress as a robot? That, that might not be sex tip. That might be an everyday tip. Right. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's cleared it. Right. Never shout out. If you're having sex with your girlfriend, never shout out a man's name. Right. Never go, Kenneth. And then when she goes, uh, what, Kenneth? Never look down and go, what? Yeah. And just continue. He was twice the man you are. <laughs> um, well, we're behind history as well, so we'll play a record. We'll do some we'll history do some after history that. History tips. Yeah, yeah, and then if we're not number one next week, then I won't be at all surprised. <laughs> Simon Sharma, have you seen any of his? You're not a massive fan of his, are you? Sharma. You know, some... <laughs> no, really. I quite like his stuff. Um, I like the w- little... Wob- What's cool, if you ever watch the Simon Sharma's history of... <laughs> Of Britain, do you, do you get excited every time you say it? Shama, uh, but he uh, Shama. he does a little wobbly head thing, right? You know, so he goes Plantagenet, and he just kind of wobbles his head, and you think, oh, is he? And but then you find yourself thinking, maybe he's got something wrong with his head, or mm. perhaps he's just a massive fan of David Gray. Who knows? But he does Possibly. a little or does, jibber jabbers. Yes, he does a little <laughs> head wobble. Now <laughs> I've just found these out. Listen, to these John, right? Do you know the first? And this is kind of a sex tip, and it's about history. So this has got to send us rocketing up, right? The first known contraceptive was crocodile dung, and it was used by Egyptians in 200 BC. Is that true? That is absolutely true. Right. There you go. My history thing is there is more history now, you might not know this, than ever before. Lovely stuff. Yeah. Fantastic. You got another one? I have. Um, Crocodile dung? Yeah. What imagine, did they do with it? I don't know. They just, you know, if you're feeling a little bit randy, you had to go down the lake, you know, get, get a croc, maybe have a slave. What, what, I mean, it's awkward if you're an Egyptian and you fancy, you know, having some safe sex. Yeah. You, uh, you're about to sex. You're about to sex. An I'm an Egyptian. Egyptian. I'm about to sex. Of course Great. you are. I think, oh, I'll nip down the uh, river with You whip s- your trousers off. That's my... Sphinx, mate. Leave it, love. I pop down there with my slave. I chuck him in, right? I get the cross. I bet you do. And then I just grab hold of his leg. They have a big feed. I go near them afterwards and just sort of manipulate them until they oh. poo into my hand. I then march back up to my maiden, you know. And then the moment's passed, really, hasn't it? Yeah, it's gone a little <laughs> bit. Um, but I just wait until she's up for it again. Weeks later, I will uh, I'll engage a bit of sex again. I don't know where you rub it. I haven't thought about that. Probably find out. Maybe it's probably a, con- a good thing to know. Maybe it's a contraceptive in that once you've got crocodile dung anywhere near your body, you don't want to have sex. I think that's probably <laughs> it. Yeah, I think that's probably it. Here's another one, right? Do you know in the gr- the Great Fire of London, right? 1666. Half of London was burnt down. Only six people were killed. Right. Well, How that, interesting. That wouldn't happen now if you burnt How, half of London. How would bizarre it? is that? They had a quote today from that Crystal you know what Palace that is? player. Insurance fraud. <laughs> they all knew it was coming. What was the Crystal Palace? One of the Crystal Palace players' house burnt down, and yeah. the quote from him in the press is, it's lucky no one died. Oh, really? That's not his first quote, is it? The first thing he said, it wouldn't have been able to put in the paper. What do you reckon he's saying? Well, expletive deleted, expletive deleted. My expletive deleted house is expletive deleted ruined. But at least nobody got but at least no one died. We'll and put the, the last bit in the paper, shall we? Exactly, it's like a BBC Three clip show. Yeah, oh dear. Right. Um, Right-handedness. Do you know why you shake hands with your right hand? Um, it's, I was talking about this in my show last night. something to do with, um, uh, I don't know, but I've got, for some reason, I've got archery in my head. Right, that's well, wrong. that's just usual for yeah. you, isn't it? It's just it, when I'm talking, you imagine firing in a... Well, you're picturing do... David, uh, Robin Hood, the... aren't you? I'm thinking, no, Agincourt and swearing. Right, and all... no, it's because you used to draw your sword with your right hand. So right. shaking hands was a way of saying, look, I haven't got a sword, I'm not going to kill you. So men used to do it as a gesture to say, I'm not killing you. That's why left-handed people aren't trusted, because they should 
shake your hand and still stab you in the side. Is that right? And that's why stairwells go uh, anti-clockwise, downwards, so that if you were trying to attack the castle coming up the stairs, you couldn't bend your sword round, but people defending could swing round and chop your head off. What if you had one of those bendy swords, then you could stab someone? Oh, if right? you had a magic bendy sword, but no, they but didn't you get had, invented what, till the, you know, those 18th curve, century. The curved swords, you can stab someone... A cutlass. Out. Yeah, you can stab someone around the corner. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be really annoying, and that's why it? pirates aren't trusted either. But if you were just swishing it about and you stabbed your mate, oh, flipping heck, sorry, that's what they You'd invented. have to hope you had some crocodile dung. That's a fair point. And the final <laughs> tip we have, uh, during the time of Peter the Great, any Russian man who wore a beard re was required to pay a special tax. Is that true? Again, all these are all true. It's the BBC, though. We should make something up. I found them all, all right. Um, Mary Antoinette was the first person to ever have a nut allergy. That's right. And uh, Mark Bright, this is recent <laughs> history, is uh, he actually has taken the original Mr. Whippy hostage. Now, we were talking about Lauro. Yeah, oh, we've had an email. It's that in. time of the year again. Football's back. Yeah. Pretty cool. Thank God. Absolutely. Uh, I had an email off of, of Adam. Um, uh, it says, All right, Russell and John, great show. Sup. I think he means, All right, Russell and John, great show. But yeah. I quite like that we're called Russell and John, great show. That should help the podcast. <laughs> uh, did you watch the first football focus of the season? No, I didn't. I haven't caught any football folk high this year. Um, Laura was on fire, he says. The host said his co-presenter was away getting married and then said all the best to Jake and Harriet. Laura chipped in with, more like Jake and Harry, knowing him. Cracking start. Then, when asked to comment on Neil Warnock's new book, he said, yeah, it's brilliant. Best half an hour of colouring in I've done for years. Bang. Yeah, so welcome back, uh, Laura. I hope he's on Match of the Day 2 tonight. I'm doing my show and then I'm coming back and I'm, I've been saving up all week my fat quota and I'm having pepperoni pizza and chips and a beer and I'm going to watch Match of the Day 2 and then I'm probably going to have sex. <laughs> what? And then I'm going to go out and do other man things. Well, if you are going to have sex. It's going to be man's night. John, if you are going to have sex, might I recommend this crocodile dung I have here? <laughs> yeah, I'll touch it. No, I might. Seriously. It stinks. Yeah. It's putting me right off you. How did they find that out? I think it's probably one of those myths. No, no, it's true. I don't true. think it actually... I think seen the it, fact is true it, that they used seen it. Seen it on YouTube, mate. <laughs> Have you? Seen it on YouTube. It's right. a really excellent edition of Quantum Leap when uh, Sam arrives back. And oh, he's boy. Got, he's got, exactly, he's got a crocodile dung in his hands. He's, he's like a coffee table hard. And there's an Egyptian lady in front of him, and he just goes, oh, boy. And you just hear Ziggy go... Ugh. Right. And then, uh, what's his name? Al rocks up and goes, go on. Go on. Did Al ever do that? Did he ever arrive when he was mid-sex? Go, go on! Right, what with it being on at six in yeah, the evening? Probably, I don't think he did. Probably why not. haven't I leaped? But why did they, you know, why did they... How, how have you figured out that that, that works? Crocodile, though. Yeah. I haven't. Specifically... I'm still dubious, to be honest. You yeah. put me under the dubious list. I what? think it's something... Yeah, but there were loads of those. You know, they're it's still like, doing China, don't they? They crush like, all balls up and eat them and that. Yeah, but it's, it's like all that, a myth. But it's not that bizarre thing about... You know, the first the first farmer is essentially a pervert that got lucky, isn't it? That he's 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 had a look at a cow or whatever it is. He's not given it a name yet. He just thinks I'm going to squeeze that, I'm going to give that a right good squeeze, and you know, milk comes out. And he's, well, that's not true. He's is lucky. It? Yeah, it is. Well, no, it might be that he's seen other cows suckling at it, and he's thought, I wonder if that's the same cows. as babies who he's... suckle their mother's breast. I yeah. wonder if that's milk. He hasn't just seen it and gone, oh, I'm pulling that. He has, essentially, hasn't he? I see him playing it was trial and error. He pulled the Absolute. tail first well, and then he I'm rolled it for a bit and twisted its ears and chocolate came no, out. What, what I'm saying, <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, somewhere along the line, every animal has been lined up, squeezed, prodded and pushed to see what they can produce. No. That's trial and error. Someone's, no, tried, no. someone's tried to milk a pig. You can milk a pig. Yeah, but we don't drink pig milk. No. So why do we drink cow milk and not pig milk? I don't know. Exactly. Someone's tried to milk. I guarantee every animal on the planet, someone's done something hideous to it to try and, you know... How like many have you done? Glove makers. How many have you glove done? Glove makers. Give me a number. How many have you done? What, how many... How, how many animals have you just gone up to and grabbed a loose bit off? None, because I'm not a farmer or a weirdo. Oh, right, well, there you go. What I'm saying is, it then. No, no, but what I'm saying is that, you know... Uh, You're having a pop at farmers. No, I'm not. You've not seen Alan Partridge series one. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic, <laughs> isn't it? But, um, they're just lucky, aren't they? You know, they've... they've farmers, seen... yeah. No, 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 but uh, there's somewhere down the line. They've seen a big animal and gone, I'm squeezing that. <laughs> that's just not true. It is. Oh, look, look, that's lucky. Imagine if it wasn't milk that had come out and it was just, like, blood. Right. Yeah. I can't believe you're doing this. What am I doing? You're just you're denigrating the entire history of farming. Oh, listen to That's you. like implying people have just been digging stuff up and eating it. 
And for every man that eats the mud, there is a man that eats the potatoes. No, but I'm just saying, you know, I bet you somebody here, what's the weirdest milk you've ever... i tell you what, actually, <laughs> here's, there was, there was something, to, something horrific happened when I was little, right? There, my mate Brian, he had... Um, you milked him. No, 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 he couldn't uh, have normal milk, so he had to have goat's milk. Someone killed his goat. Right. Stabbed his goat and killed it. God, you grew up on the mean streets, that, didn't you? How horrific is that? Somebody's gone, I'm going to kill that goat, and they stabbed it. It's like that Brazilian Let's, film. Uh, City of God. <laughs> City of God. Someone kill my god. No, like, Here, have you heard someone's killed his goat? I know, it's unbelievable. You shot <gasps> him in the foot. Is that He-Man you got in your lunchbox? Tough times. Now, mm -hmm. um, someone here has sent in a fantastic quote about Loro. They say they work in a bingo hall. Last Sunday evening, a customer made a joke to me about wanting a refund for his books because he hadn't won. I, without even thinking, quoted the great Loro. Well, you pay your money, you take your chance. <laughs> customer loved it. So it seems that I've been uh, indoctrinated into the cult of Laura without even realising it. Nice, he well, will I get endorse you. that. We're very close to what... We've, we've said this before on air, haven't we? About the whole kind of getting him to review films. Yeah, well, we try to keep it a bit hush-hush, so it's a surprise when it happens. So but we do keep mentioning it every week, I have slightly spoiled that again. Yeah, several right? times. Now, yeah. let's, do, uh, let's do board games. Let's do board games. We've had one that relates to last week's one, when you were on about licking people's eyeballs. I wasn't on about that. Somebody sent in a text, that's what they do when they're bored, lick each other's eyeballs. Uh, dear Russell and John, about the licking eyeballs board game. Put I'm crocodile thinking... dung on your eyes. Hey, nothing's happening. Yeah. I can't uh, wait to ask Craig Campbell. We've got Craig Campbell coming on later, who mm. is without doubt the most terrifying comedian in the world and uh, an anecdote about crocodile dung is sure to set him off I bet he's <laughs> eating it somewhere in a teepee <laughs> she says I'm thinking it's maybe not so much fun if one of you's wearing contact lenses well oh! I tasted one myself and it might be delicious there was a horrible story about some bloke the other day who uh, got home from the pub and spent an hour taking his contact lenses off because he was so drunk he'd already taken them off peeled right. off his eyes got no eyes now he's got scotch eggs for eyes <laughs> <laughs> At what point did you start making that story up? Just Never happened. So we're clear for the press release. The, the press release? <laughs> yeah. I would start to say Russell Howard made all of that Scotch Egg thing up. Yeah, but we, we could... are pleased to set the record straight. Here he, and here he is, oh, Barry. Man with Scotch Eggs Here's Here is Barry Eggy. Just a bloke <laughs> turning up with Scotch Eggs for eyes and just peacocks pecking them. He's right. Yeah, oh, look, who said that? Meet my mate, uh, Michael Sausage Nose. <laughs> There is something about a Geordie accent. Yeah. <laughs> Saying silly words and Geordie voices. Oh. Now, uh, board games. What's, what else have we got? Um, uh, Penny in Shrewsbury. Lovely name. Lovely way to end an email. Love to your mothers, Penny in Shrewsbury. Uh, the second game, because she emailed in the first one, but yes. we're not doing that one. Uh, it's called Poor Man's. And what you do is you... It's, it's like a look like a Poor Man. Well, we can do that so, if you like. Yeah, that's good. We should it's play. a bit like the milkman, but you don't really want him coming knocking. But the poor man can be a game that you play. You have to just walk up to people and you have to whisper, I'm poor man. Right. That'd be quite nice. Oh, well, it? you know, spread that. And see how f how many times you get punched in the face. Yeah, or arrested. Yeah. Um, all You're right, going to get arrested for going around calling yourself poor man. Of course you are. In, the, in today's modern PC gone oh, mad it, world. It, it is, it, in this political creative gone mad yeah. world, I can't walk up to an old lady and go, I am poor man. I have <laughs> the right to walk down the street without being told that a young man thinks he's poor man. <laughs> I'm out going to the haberdashery and I don't want to be told that that young man is poor man. But everybody knows that I am poor man. Imagine Look at that. that. <laughs> Well, imagine what a letter that would be to read in the local, <laughs> local paper. I was accosted by a youth who screamed at me, I am porn man. Well. No. Dear Jiddingham Herald. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Shocked and outraged. Should I cry out, I am cabbage eater? No. <laughs> Come on. Um, it's porn man's, and it's like a lookalike you I, I can only hear porn man. This is going to really struggle. All now. right, then. Um... It's a great game when you're stuck in some seedy, dodgy scally pub to pass the time, look around for a few poor man's versions of celebrities. It all began when we spotted a poor man's Jude Law in the library. Oh. But my favourite spot was the poor man's Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, that's horrible. Why? I don't like the idea of that, of just going around looking at the people who are poor and go, he looks like someone who's a little it's bit It's not famous. to do with poor, it's just to do with a slightly unattractive or, you know, it's the same as saying he looks a little bit like a fat. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, but it's not that time when you said you thought we saw. Whoopi oh, Goldberg. don't even go into <laughs> this. Do you want to do this story? Well, you said she looked like Whoopi Goldberg. She did look like Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> she did a little. Like Whoopi. She did look like Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> We're driving along, right? And John shouts out, "Hey, there goes Whoopi Goldberg!" She and a woman who looked like Whoopi Goldberg. She I can't believe like you're going into this story. Just, and I look like the bad guy. No, you just shouted. He does this all the time. He just shouts, hey, she looks like him. <laughs> right, now here's a board game. Now, Yeah, you read it. Hello. 
It's called Fortunately Unfortunately. It's a great game we play on trains and the likes from Rosalind. You take it in turns to say something fortunate, then unfortunate. For example, person one, that'll be you, John. Fortunately, I've just learned to drive. And then I say, unfortunately, you crash your car off a cliff. And then you say, fortunately, you can fly so you don't get hurt. And so on and so forth. It's quite a good game. That's basically being six, isn't it? Yeah, but then you kill me. But uh, Yeah, but then I don't die because I've got no kill disease. Yeah, but then you fell off the building and then, yeah, but I've got wings. And then I done a poo. <sighs> That's how it always Quite used to fun, end. Yeah. Uh, we've got another game here. Uh, when we were at school, we used to balance all the chairs in a classroom on just the back two legs in the small pen groove at the back of the desk. Then, oh, got a burp coming. Oh, here it comes. Oh, <laughs> then, that was horrible, I edit the it? podcast and I'll tell you that is going top <laughs> oh, and tail of today's podcast. They, they'd sneak carefully out of the classroom, pulling the doors closed very slowly. We did this over lunchtime when the teacher, when the teacher was not in the room. We were at quite a small school, so after lunch you could often hear a large crash as 30 chairs fell to the floor. When they started to go, they all set each other off, recommended. So she's essentially playing chair dominoes there. Right, well that sounds dangerous. These people, these people. Now oh. we've had one, a specific request. Yes. Someone wants board games for a specific journey, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, there's a lady called um, Natalie, right? She lives in Greenwich. She's there are several. Yes, she's flying to Austria next week and she's wondering what your favourite board game suggestion has been as I will need to entertain myself for the three-hour flight. Well, first and foremost, you can play Porn Man. Uh, yeah, on the plane as well, because they're not going to throw you off, are they? Yeah, just get, imagine that, get on a plane and go, I am Porn Man! Especially if you're a woman. Yeah. That adds a certain nuance to the game, doesn't That'd it? That'd be great, just to sit next to someone who's quite terrified about flying and go, don't worry, I'm Porn Man. Uh-huh. I'm some weird superhero. The worst superhero If the plane goes down, I'll just start banging the plane. <laughs> well, how's that going to help Paul Man? Well, I'm going to bang the plane. <laughs> People in you the get emergency your own seat. seats. You get your own seat. See, that's the thing. If you act really crazy or you're really fat, you always get two seats. Yeah, or you do what you do and just put your bag on the other seat, even though the train's busy. Always thinking. Now, uh, we would do... do oh, I've, I just farted. I can only apologise. Oh, were doing, that's going in the podcast. Let me just write we, that. Oh, don't put that down, John. Come Fart on. and burp. Now, you know earlier you were talking in a Geordie voice. Professional. How are we going to get ahead of Scott Mills? He doesn't do that sort of thing. He's got no anus. You're listening to Scott Mills. Honestly, it's professional. No wonder we're not sex tips beating us. What you don't do in the bedroom is flatulate on your lady's face. Unless she's into it, in which case do a lot of it. If she's all Oh, about... if she's into it, then she deserves to be single. <laughs> oh, I imagine. I bet your house stinks. Yeah, but you're both happy. No, you're not. Yeah, you are. It's a bare existence, isn't it, really? Well, you've got no mates. Should we go down to the pub? We're barred, do you remember? Imagine if that's your thing, you're like fine on each other's faces. We're the only thing that smells worse than scampy fries. But imagine if you can't, you haven't got one in you. You're like... <laughs> <sighs> Sorry. That's yeah, that's downstairs. not the sort of thing you want to force. What if she's really into being farted on, but not anything yeah, else? Yeah, exactly, then, yeah, yeah. You know. Awkward. So, all in all, <laughs> in conclusion... <laughs> yes. ...probably best not to. So, uh, do your quick Geordie email. Uh, somebody said uh, what this girl can do on her flight board games, text us in 64046. What she can do while she's bored for three hours is say silly words in Geordie voice. Try these. Conjunctivitis or Kawasaki. Kawasaki's a good one. Yeah. I've been watching uh, the Fat Hairy Bikers. Fat Hairy Bikers. Yeah. Like, he's I'm great. cooking some chocolate mole. He's I'm chopping br- an onion. He's brilliant, isn't he? That you right? can't fail that. Hello. Hey. Uh, you're listening to the radio. Uh, <laughs> well, you were probably more ready for it than we were. That was Girls Who Play Guitars uh, by Maximo Park, and before that was Something Better Changed by The Stranglers. Russell's gone to get a sandwich from the shop, and he isn't back yet. Um, you can leave if you want. Are you going to... Yeah, so our guest's arrived, Craig Campbell, but he's popped off as well. Uh, Russell's in the shop, so I'll read a couple of emails. This is slightly tense, um, because Russell's going to get back and think I've rigged this. Oh, here he is. Hello, we're on air, mate. Jesus, yeah, radio. It took ages. You remember what you were doing? I was getting you a I love this sandwich, and no, I love no, that, no, no, it wasn't like that. Hello. Um, no. Oh, I was nervous, because no. I thought you'd come back, and whenever I've done a link on my own, you go, what are you to do? You usurp me on my own radio show. No, not at all. It's, it's our radio show, John. Yeah, I know. Hey, look, I've got you a coffee there. Thanks very much. Yeah. Fair uh, trade. No. Oh dear. Jesus, this is awkward. And also, I um. Oh. I got you a muffin. I bet you did. It's got. Oh, what's that it? on it? It's got toffee on it and caramel on it. And I thought you and Craig could share that. Right. But both of you. <laughs> Strike me as not the men who share. Yeah, not really. Um, not right. and now I've got, way of I now coming. have to offer possibly the hardest, the most terrifying comedian on the fringe, a toffee muffin. 
Yeah. You toffee muffined Craig Campbell first thing go. on a Sunday morning. Oh, I was already what were I was you thinking do? of stuff. What were you going to do? Well, hang on. Let me just get my head straight. Do you want to just talk for a minute? Let okay. Me get me, let me get my bra sorted. Well, let's um, do some We've had some good emails in. Yeah. Um, but I, I can't remember what they were. There was a good text. Well, there was one about oh, Max. What's happened to you? You've lost it. Well, I'm busy man in the ship, mate. You're off in space uh, about mice. Apparently, someone emailed in to say there's mice everywhere in Edinburgh. There's nothing you can do about it. Right. So this mouse has obviously been in my house the whole time. Right. Uh, my mate's a bit mucky. Uh, it's Vicky in Leeds, but not in that way. She left a half-finished bowl of pudding on her bedroom floor one night and was woken up in the middle of the night by a loud tinkling noise. She looked at the bowl and there was a little mouse in it eating the cake and banging against the spoon. Randy, old mouse. Uh, maybe you should try this. And mice also like chipstick crisps. Really? Yeah. Now, um, we're going to be chatting to Guy Garvey later on. Oh, we are, yes. Let's right. hope he's a little bit more prepared than Ooh, we were. Um, nice. I'm not having a pop at Guy. He's a good guy. No, you're he's having, a good guy. You're having a pop at me, that's Someone fine. emailed in a very good game about uh, that it's called Sly Five, where you have to high-five colleagues around the office without them noticing. So when they reach for stuff or do stuff like that, you have to sly five them, and you oh. get points based on their seniority within the complex. Oh, nice. So like you high, sly five the cleaner, and you get five points. Sly five the company executive, you get hundred points. Oh, really? That's quite nice. On a on a different link, uh, we've been formally invited, John, to the premiere of oh, the that month, was new Edinburgh show that's going to take the festival by storm next year. It's called Puppetry of the Anus by yeah. Party Pete. Right. Well, I look forward to that. I would go and watch that. I think you would. You'd ask to be in it, wouldn't you? I tell to be you honest, I tell you what's really funny. Um, when you see the names on the sell-up board, your name yesterday, you sold out your show. It was fantastic. I was so proud. You were next to a show that's called Silly Billy Bum Breath. <laughs> and it looked like there was a colon there, and it was John Richardson in <laughs> Silly Billy Bum Breath. I'd pay good money to see you in a performance. Did like you that. put a colon on the thing? I may have done. Hey. Are you sabotaging my Edinburgh? Now, we're joined in the studio by the fantastic comedian, the wonderful Mr. Craig Campbell. Oh, yeah. Hola. 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 Oh, Hola, nice. indeed. Now, uh, Morgan. We, <laughs> we know of no other guest we've ever had on the show <coughs> that is as, as uh, delightful and yet as <coughs> intimidating as Craig can be. <coughs> um, before, because bef basically I've been out and uh, I went to get some sandwiches and I got you a muffin, Craig. Did you? Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> One of my uh, least favourite. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Straight away. What was great about it, Craig left a coffee and some water and then kind of went to the toilet and then wandered back and we'd moved the coffee and water. Well, I tied it up because I didn't want it to be a mess. <laughs> yeah, but you'd moved the two things that were together independently. <laughs> no, I didn't touch them. You Look, scattered it was there. my... Uh... Uh, is that where you left it? Yeah, uh, there was a coffee over there oh, and I never the water the over there. Yeah, but the water was here. You broke up my grouping. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just great. <laughs> oh, now, Craig, we've been chatting all the way through the show about stuff to do. Regarde. Kind of, it, it, you know, uh, at the festival. Yeah, well, no, specifically, John's got a mouse in his flat. I've got a moose oh, yeah. in my house. Now, you get a cat in your house. Yes, yeah, I don't like cats. Ooh, you're screwed. <laughs> I'd rather so, just have the mouse. But what would be your suggestion in that? Uh, I've tried every route, and the cat's the best way to go. But if you can't have a cat, then uh, I went for a tin cat once, and it just I, turned into a uh, tin cat. Yeah, it's like a um, uh, live release mouse trap. But the thing is, you've got to tend those. You can't just yeah. go on the road for six weeks. I've got stuff to do. Because then you end up with uh, it was deemed Mauschwitz. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, about ten different mice in various states of decay. Oh, really? Yeah, feeding off of each other. I don't know what sort of <laughs> problems mice pose, but I'd rather have an well, alive disease mouse. disease would be the start, John. Right, all right. Well, I didn't know that. I, I picture like Stuart Little, and he seems quite tidy. But I thought I'd rather have an alive mouse that runs under the washing machine than a cat who's left me a half-chewed mouse on the kitchen floor. But, that's, but isn't that the, the cat's way of, of showing that they love you? <laughs> it is just going to be that thing. I, I yeah. love you so much. Here's something I killed for you. That's like saying your ex-girlfriend's way of saying she still loves you, sending you her feces in the post. It's a gesture that's not really needed. It's a big leap you've made there, though. Not Miss. really. If she's sending you feces in the post, she's obviously upset about the breakup, and if she was upset about it, I mean, she still wants to be with you. There's a lot you've, you've given away there, mate. We're chatting about mice and cats and stuff like that. You know, it's all quite jovial, and the idea that mice bring, you know, uh, cats bring home mice because they love you. Yeah. And then from somehow, you've leapt to someone's posting feculence to you. Yeah. What's happened? I've well, been... I got some posts this week um, <laughs> oh. Oh, no. that I wasn't very happy about. No, but it's the same thing, isn't it? You're implying... Stinky that... post. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same thing in any way. What are you talking uh, about? It is the same thing. Cats leaving you mice is not a nice thing to do, is it? And, like, chewed up birds and that. 
But it is in their eyes. Show of affection. They love it. Yeah, it's a show of affection, whereas in no way would they it be a lady's you. show of affection to go, oh, I love John. What I must do is crap Pump one out into a letter. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Are you a cat fan, Craig? Oh, God, yeah, I love cats. Eh? Really? Wow, yeah, absolutely, that, yeah. Does that... Yeah, they're, they're, they're like silent burglar alarms. You know someone's in the house, and you still get to beat them up. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love a cat. Dogs right. are like... <laughs> He was here ten minutes ago, but they're in a the van now, about ten miles away. And, and then they eat do? something that you value. A cat's an accomplice. A cat will just go. Oh, that's where he keeps his precious things, just oh, stalking no, around. No, and I'm then you wake when up. you're home. Yeah, you're screwed either way if you're not there. But if you're at home and you think you heard something, you just look at the cat. And if he's you know sleeping away, then you're thinking that you heard something. But if if the ears are up and the eyes are open, it's like, <laughs> all right, sp <laughs> spider's got to fly. <laughs> <laughs> but then equally, you don't know if the cat's eyes and ears are open just because it's decided oh. to scratch your face off. I know of no other man who would be delighted with the idea that someone's in your house. Yeah, there's a burglar <laughs> and he's still inside. In the, de in the dead of night, my response to that is, oh, Christ, I was having a lovely dream. I was a hippo. All of a sudden, I'm very sure John be like, ah, me precious stuff, me saucepans. There's you going, right, which way? Weapon, which weapon? It's work done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, <laughs> to be yeah. honest, I'd be glad of the company. Now, it's time, John, for a bit of bot watch. Yes. What we'll do after this, we'll carry on with ball games and various bits of Edinburgh fun. But for the time being, where do we join them? I think we joined them last week. Well, they've week. moved into their new house. That's they've both right. got jobs. Yep. So, and uh, John Bot is now a postman. And I do believe Ross Bot works on a sex line. He does work on a sex line. All right, well, let's, uh, let's catch out with them. Here we go. Now that our heroes have found somewhere to live and a steady source of income, they can begin to make plans for their future. We head over to Elephant and Castle now and proudly introduce the Bot Couple. Dummy, I am home. Late, I might add. How comes you're so late? Dinner's cold. It's a salad. Well, it's warm then. Either way, it's ruined. I was bound to finish late, wasn't I? Because I was late in the morning because you had another accident in the bath, didn't you? Don't keep going on about it. They should put warnings on they bottles. When it says relax in bubble bath, it don't say you might relax too much. Bloody ylang ylang. In future, I shall buy mildly relaxing bubble bath what won't make you lose control of yourself in a bath. How was your round? Getting better, Fruity. That bot scanner's worth its weight in frickin' gold. I made 40 quid in tips today. I say tips. Misappropriated birthday funds might be more apt. Way I see it is, I ain't never had a birthday present, so the world owes me. And I only rob out of envelopes with cards to kids under five in them. What's a four-year-old gonna do with a tenner for bot's sake? Friggin' away on DVDs or some <laughs> in a purple dinosaur outfit. No, it's a far greater thing I do. What have you done today? Many calls? First days is always quiet. I reckon people's is saving up their dirty ideas for the weekend. Yeah. Anyway, meant I had time to do a bit of shopping. <laughs> what the f*** was that? Power cat, meet John Bot. John Bot, meet the power cat. <laughs> yeah, pets! What have you... No, pets, mate. They make mess. They need feeding, and I've told you once, I've told you three times. I don't trust cats. Well, that's as maybe. He'll find his way home. He's the greatest. Don't be so sure. I give him quite a clout. <laughs> well, well, well. We meet again. Sonia, active... <laughs> Oh, God, that's a cat I can respect. Who taught him how to fight? Surprisingly enough, Montel Williams. Fair dues. What else have you been up to? Well, I put cards underneath the neighbours' doors, this is, inviting them round for a few drinks. You what? I put cards... I heard what you said, chicken. I just wanted to make sure I heard you right before I kicked the fun out of you for inviting a lot of <laughs> these strangers out of my house to drink my booze! I'll put some time aside for this one. What time are they coming? Not till eight. It's eight now, you little f <laughs> Yay! DJ, let's get this party started. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. And the first guest is... <gasps> Join us next week for highlights from the party to see just who is at the door and what they are holding. Find out also what John Bot will do when drunk in front of strangers. How are you finding Edinburgh in general, Craig? Uh, yeah. Good, uh, but I wanted to give some uh, quick advice on, the, uh, oh, on yeah. the foot traffic. You're a fool if you're not walking on the road. 
Well, that alleviates all your trouble. Yeah, but then, then you got you buses. Just hit the, oh, yeah. yeah you got to be on the, pretty that's thin what ears street. are for. It's a pretty thin street and a lot of yeah. tourist buses going past. And I'm yeah. scared to get, because I've got my iPod on, so I don't have to talk to this. you got to walk out the traffic. Right, <laughs> that's the trick. You have how can I put? And this? they won't a follow you presence. into the road. That's what I. I I put yeah. money on it that if you walked, if you were to walk towards a bus yep. and you catch the eyes of the bus driver, yep. he'd veer away. Yeah, yeah. I, I <laughs> can't get away with some that. sense of I know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. better finish this if you do it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. If I walk towards a bus, <laughs> he would just think, well, that's one less rat in this. <laughs> <laughs> that curly weirdo. He probably wants to die anyway. Yeah, I jump. Wow, what a way to go, getting hit by a bus. It, I like the a tourist aspect, bus as well. Yeah. And if have you, you look on your Have you lift, done any of the touristy things while you've been here? Do you know, uh, Craig, you've been in loads and stuff like that. Do yeah, you... I'd, I've uh, had good times at the castle every once in a while. It's always showing friends that show up, so you kind of yeah. do a tourist, touristy thing on the back of showing other people around, but that okay. dungeon's pretty worth seeing. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, just to get a sense that, you know, like when it had a thousand guys in it, you know, a thousand years ago. Yeah. Would have been quite an atmosphere, you know? But like, <laughs> that was like under Craig Campbell's bed if you're a mouse, Jesus. <laughs> and um, and, and in, in general, actually, this is what we're going to ask you, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, because we've got a section on our show called Board When you're games. fighting a group. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but we had a question, right? That You know when you're kind of bored in life and the little things you do to entertain yourself? Yeah. Um, what would you do? There's a girl who's on a flight to Austria. She's yeah. got a three-hour flight. She, she's got nothing. She, she doesn't want to get bored. She needs something to do on the plane. Craig. Wow. I'd, uh, I'd get a book on uh, flying and pay attention. <laughs> oh, yeah, to you can the, fly, uh, can't you? Yeah, I'd, I'd take a look at what the uh, pilot's doing by the noises the flaps are making and, uh, and the sound of the engine. That would keep you excited. Does that relax you more, knowing that you can fly and you can tell what the noises are, or does listening out for them... Yeah. Stress you out more. Yeah, I used to listen out for them anyway, but now I'm more aware of why they're happening. God, so, yeah, that, that would be great if you that were would on be a plane cool, and, it? Yeah. and there you went, oh, the pilot's passed out. Yeah, it sounds like he's fully flapped. Oh, have you ever had that opportunity? How great would that be? Yeah. Just, uh, uh, sir, can you fly a plane and you haven't had the fish? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm yeah. That's my dream now. I'd you have, did that I'd have had the fish. You did that in the space of a year, didn't you? Pretty much. Oh, three months, man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah it's that's astounding. Ten, ten hours in and you're on your own flying around. Which is, like, that, that's that really wrong. Shows it it is wrong. Yeah. It's totally wrong. That, like, as we speak right now, there's, like, guys with nowhere near a pilot's license flying over our heads through, you know, normal airspace. It's astounding, <laughs> really. Like, long before you get your license, you're flying to other airfields and landing and coming home again and... It's just like, I had no idea that happened. I didn't assume they'd just let you go. And you do all these things because you, you like climb, well, not climb, you run up Arthur's seat on a regular basis, which no. John wants to do, don't you? I'm going to do on Tuesday, yeah. I'm going to run up Arthur's seat. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I went for a run. Are you running in, in general? Yeah. Okay. A cool. bit. Well, I'll, I'll run and then walk for a bit. Right. I just I realised yesterday you, you can see my venue from the top of uh, Arthur's seat, and I want to see just how cack my venue looks from that high up. Because <laughs> well, from ground level, it looks pretty crack. It looks dreadful. It's let's yeah. be honest, it's a portal cabin. I want it's to be so, look over Edinburgh <laughs> and then look down and think, oh, that's what's costing me thousands of pounds. That box. But it's hilarious because you arrive and they, and you know your promotions company, whoever kind of go Edinburgh Festival. Here you go, my lad, and you get really giddy and you've seen your poster yeah. and you've convinced yourself that you're a star, <laughs> and then you arrive and you're in a portal cabin. Yeah. And there is. So Dust on the floor. Is my Pete. venue behind that toilet? Yeah. No, no. No, no, no. Really. that's it. What's that smell? What's that tramp doing in there? <laughs> oh, it's your cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't believe you walked to your gig. It's just a good, that. like we were talking about dodging people in the street, that's a good sort of driving thing to dodge people because mm. it makes you think, yeah, I've got to get there, all the ghosts and dinner, get out of my way, old American couple. It's that horrible thing though, isn't it? When you're, because your mind, if, if you've got, your, if you got like your Walkman or your iPod or whatever on random. Walkman? Yeah, no, I was trying to, I wasn't going to mention a product, but then I thought, I can't say Walkman, what we're talking about. But uh, when you've got like, you know, some random songs, you're totally dictated by the tunes that pop into your head. Mm. So you see something that's very kind of, and the world is just magnificent and you know you're marching along you're in the movie version of your life and then if you have someone like Alan Bennett just around the corner he can bring you down in a second you know just bouncing along really merrily mother would fall over on a regular basis and you just find yourself just dreary and down never have it on random it's a mistake no I don't do that but the idea that you have the same song why, this, why not just have a different one for every day do you not get bored with it 
Yeah, but you want, you want songs that are reminiscent of certain times, don't you? So I've, that, that'll that be my Edinburgh song. Last year, my Edinburgh album was Want To, Rufus Wainwright. Year before that, it was Art Garfunkel, Best Of. <laughs> uh, year before that, Proclaimers. So when you listen to it, you think, ah, oh, Edinburgh 2004, crying into the sink. What I remember of, now. What kind of music are you into? One of my best friends was the first guy to die in Canada on rollerblades wearing headphones. Right. Yeah. yeah wow. Yeah, just, you know, rollerblading along, womp. So I, I I don't spend much time in headphones when I'm out in public. There's yeah. a, lot, a lot of meat heads. That'll do it for you. Yeah. yeah but you do chase down buses. About. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I like to have my ears and my uh, eyes open. I, I smell for trouble. But you do. No, <laughs> but even, honestly, I'm not sure if this is really coming across, but he genuinely does. You know, I remember Jane telling me a fantastic story about you, that you you were kind of in a cafe or something, yeah. and she was just saying it's fantastic eating with, with you because you're just constantly eyes darting around, looking, expecting that Back anyone... Back at the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something maybe going down. Someone may have nunchucks. I'm looking and going, oh, this looks lovely food. I should have some food in here. John's going, well, the cut me in here is disgrace. We're leaving. And... And Jane said there was a great thing where suddenly you just got up, bolt upright, ran out because somebody had nicked oh, yeah. a bag. And yeah, then yeah, the, what yeah. the last thing you want if you're nicking a bag is Campbell on your ass. Imagine that. Yeah. Just kind of go, there you go, I've made a bag. And just seeing you behind like that. Yeah, they were quicker than I thought as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it was a wild one. I couldn't believe how quick they got out of the restaurant. One. It was an insane event. Yeah, and I had a gut full of chicken. It's hard to sprint when you're you know, <laughs> pumping chicken out at the same time. And I, I just thought those guys look ropey. I thought they don't, they don't look like they are coming in here for chicken. <laughs> Those dudes don't look hungry for chicken. And they, uh, they were kind of like going too far into the corners of the restaurant and just sort of like looking at each other in too suspicious a way. And I thought, oh, there's something up here. And, uh, and then uh, noticed that one of them had a purse. And I thought, that guy's not gay. <laughs> and, uh, and he started down the stairs and I just, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll rumble them. And, they, and by the time I got out of my chair and got to the top of the stairs, they were like out the front door and it was why I, I was quite surprised at how quick they were like rats like <laughs> real rat human beings and I, uh, I got Go down the stairs him. and just made eye contact with the guy that was coming through the door I gave him like the kind of which way and he like nodded his head and <laughs> laughed and I was like on it oh. and, uh, and they were gone I couldn't see them when I got onto the road oh. but I thought they're the kind of people I know they wouldn't have endurance I know they probably haven't eaten very well or they haven't really thought <laughs> through that someone's gonna pump after them <laughs> someone's had a high mile. protein to meal totally I thought yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been eating well and sleeping well. These guys are in trouble. And uh, and I humped it. I humped it at like a medium, like under sprint, but at like some uh, a pace that I could sustain for a good distance, thinking that I would get beyond them and then work back towards the restaurant when they were counting the booty. Uh, and uh, and I uh, I saw the guy. I kind of like did a circle around and kind of took the logical route to go back to the restaurant. I didn't catch both of them. I just caught the one of them. And uh, and he was walking at me. And I just got, got in front of him. I said, uh, If you don't give me the bag i will kill you <laughs> and uh and he, and he, uh, gave and he just bag. like sat for a second he just kind of like is looking a bit sheepish and then just kind of held out the bag and uh yeah and i uh, and then you got chased by yeah. another man who thought you were robbing a purse off an innocent gay man yeah, in the yeah yeah no no i got i got back to the restaurant and gave uh gave a few people back a, a woman her purse uh, wow. in particular Robin that was Hood. over the moon she just couldn't believe after like went from oh my god <laughs> to, oh, there it is. All right, thanks. And, and, uh, and then back to and, dinner. And then we went back to dinner. and uh, All about, of that, and then you're like, apple pie. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, I will have dessert. <laughs> Did you get a discount? <laughs> and, uh, no, 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 of oh. course not. Crying out loud. And, uh, and like if, I, you know, if I'd been London, the man on they, the door. They were, the cops were even angry that I, you know, after, because uh, <laughs> I say the cops, because uh, unbelievably, as uh, we started to finish our meal, my girlfriend realized that they had got her phone. Oh, really? Yeah, and I, in fact, I gave the guy's bag back. What it, what had happened is I got, I got the bag. I said, give me the bag with the purse in it. Yeah. And he gave me the bag and I took the purse out. And I really didn't feel like I had the right to rifle through his stuff or I didn't know what was his and what wasn't. Yeah. But I knew he had taken the, por uh, the purse. But I'd given him back a bag with my girlfriend's phone in it. Oh. And uh, just like one of those things. That, Accomplice. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we talked to the cops and they're like, oh, well, we've had a few people stabbed this week doing that. You should tell your boyfriend to not... Uh, chase miscreants into the street. We've had some belt of feedback, John. God. Somebody, this is fantastic, of uh, Tubular Bells. Somebody's put, nice one, John. Love it. Love to your mothers. Catherine, three kisses. Take one of them, Craig. Yeah, me. Uh, the, uh, the only excuse for Tubular Bloody Bells is on the Exorcist soundtrack. That's from Sonic Jism. That's his name. We're allowed to say uh, well, it. Well, I've got to respect his opinion. Absolutely, Mr. Jism, please. <laughs> and uh, this is a great one. Is that Anglo-Saxon? This is, <laughs> <laughs> listen to this, right? 
great song, perfect music to commit an illegal act to. Not that I condone illegal acts such as genocide, but what a tune. Right. So there you go, that's the oh, tune. Place and I've spawned that. Absolutely, so that's technically your fault, but uh, you know, incredibly, everyone's into it, I think. Yeah, except angry spunk yeah. man or whatever well, his name is. It's all fine. Yeah. So well, now, we always Craig, get one negative, yeah. don't you? I don't know how to get into this, but we right. do we do a podcast for the show. And yeah. earlier on, Why not? like, well, exactly. We're in, the, but we're in the top ten, bizarrely. Right. But in order to get up, um, the I think at number six is it, John? There are uh, the sex sex tips. tips, and at number five, it's uh, there's a show about history. So oh, what we're trying uh, to do, pop a bit of history and sex tips into the show. Ah. Hike yourselves up. Now we've already had a few. Um, <laughs> now we're wondering if you had any. Now keep this the charming side of Baldy if you can. Sex tips? Sex yes. tips and history tips. I can't believe. You can do what am too. I doing? What? I can't even look Craig in the eyes. That's the idea. But then it links in and then we can put it all onto the podcast but I can't look it, uh, look Craig into the eyes and go, Never Craig. scream, eat the poison. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's always worked good for there me. You go. right. nice uh, and never touch their eyeballs. Uh, no matter how much you think it might make them feel good. <laughs> How wide are the eyes of the women yeah, you're exactly. making love to? Well, they're usually pretty shocked to see me. Generally. <laughs> <laughs> but I was alone in the apartment. <laughs> you! <laughs> the cat knew. The cat knew. Now, history. Um, what, what kind of historical stories that maybe people haven't heard of could you uh, pop in? Oh, uh, and wow. you've got that fantastic story, but I don't know if you want to tell it. What's that? The, uh, about the First World War, the Second World War, yeah. and the, uh, the, oh, yeah, the that's, football. That's a fantastic one. That, yeah, that is a wild one. But uh, Oh, I'm sorry, I thought it, it was a sex history theme. So oh, no, 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 I, no, I, no, I, no, I, no, 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 no. Oh, Catherine the Great got slammed by a horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't know if that is appropriate. Oh, maybe that's uh, what didn't she, she die as well under a horse? Yeah, no, I, th did, I yeah. think that's known as a huge myth, though. Is it? Yeah, to malign the poor lady. Oh, really? Yeah, because it was the whole idea... It's really bizarre getting... To, you get taught that when you're about 14 in history that she had a horse lowered down onto her and you kind of... Yeah. The hell? Is that, is that what I do? Is that what girls do? <laughs> oh. you know? did, Maybe yeah. she was just trying to milk it, eh? Did, yeah. you, did you catch the uh, the cartoon in Spain that, uh, <laughs> Probably that, made fun of the, that made fun of the royals? Oh, and Carlos's family? And, mm. uh, yeah, it was outrageous. It was when you realise that you're really thrilled to live in the UK where um, they, they sent the SWAT team in, basically, like yep. the, the uh, Spanish version of the SWAT team, to clear out all of the newspapers that contained this political cartoon because you're not allowed under Spanish law to make fun of the royalty of the monarchs, right? It's, Which Yeah, I, did you... Is yeah, it's a, a very different now? thing, though, though, because their royal family are very different, so there's more of a feeling... Well, they don't the, take a the joke, The public apparently. are far more on their side because they don't... You know, they're not paid for by the tax. They have jobs and stuff. Right. So, so there's much more of an attitude of, well, why would you take them a cut? Because they're just a working family also on top of like, what they do. Well, this is where you got to hear the joke, John. It's actually, it's it's quite good. It's uh, uh, the Spanish government begin, I think it began about um, a month ago, giving anybody who had a child uh, 2,400 euro, just right. to, like, you know, as an incentive to, <laughs> we're, we're disappearing. <laughs> Immigration <laughs> is holding us to zero, you know, rate Put of... Of the crocodile dung. So, so they, um, so they had a, a cartoon of the uh, princess and the prince at it, and and the prince said, you know, uh, if if you get pregnant, this will be the closest thing to work I've ever done. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, which wow. is, which is actually uh, you know quite a quite a funny thing. But to think that you know on top of that that they sent the cops in to confiscate newspapers is just yeah. like you know it's it's dark ages. It's it's ridiculous. It's why you realize that people come from all over Europe and just uh, aspire to have the kind of press freedom that the UK has. Though. But then you look at the hoo-ha about that Queen thing, and, you know... Oh, it's ridiculous. She no, just got in a stump, and the, we had well, to no, get the, all narky about that. Well, we didn't get narky. That's the beauty of it. Nobody cared. That was the, you know... The, I mean, Le But you cared her. about... You were but, told that you cared before it had even been released. Yeah, no the, one had seen it before you were told, oh, that makes you angry, doesn't it? Yeah, but you, you. But the beautiful thing is, the majority of us look at it and go, nah, not really. It's quite funny, isn't it? You know, it's just the whole idea. Yes, but they, they doctored the footage. I don't know really the that. documentary either. If yeah, someone had done a cartoon of Prince Philip and the Queen in Legoland, getting up to all loads of stuff, then we'd probably react similar. They'd probably. Oh, I'd watch that. If, if they're dressed as Lego, banging each other, I'd watch that. <laughs> Give that five stars on YouTube, John. <laughs> Again, that's a bizarre argument you've come in with. <laughs> what if? What the hell are you talking about? Earlier we were talking about mice and cats, and you leak. Yeah, but what if girls are sending poo in letters to you? Yeah. And then we're chatting about the BBC. How do they know where I live in Edinburgh? On yeah. anything else. It's yeah. The They've got my Edinburgh address. That's the, the thing. A most amazing leap of logic. Kind of, yeah, but what if they're dressed up as Lego people having sex? It throws you off as soon as you get a turd in the post. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, it ruins 
Everything, it, every, every, it? everything, everything after that. Just, it really yeah. does. Yeah. And I think it's one a bit of random. Them, I think one of them sent me crocodile dung, and I think I'm impotent. <laughs> and I've tried to just eat me porridge and chill out of the morning. Right. Let's just tell me, pastor. It's uh, something a uh, guy that you can write into uh, if you're in Jamaica. I think we could probably write into him from here. But I want you to confirm that this is an actual paper. I can see that. People, tell yeah, me, pastor. Yeah, yeah, people deny it now. What, the uh, what paper is it? Uh, it's the uh, Star. Okay. And uh, that's uh, Jamaica wide. How have you got that? <laughs> when I was in Jamaica, I was uh, running in a half marathon in uh, Jamaica. In and you stopped November to buy a paper? Last year. Yeah, I stopped to get a paper, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, by the way, if you're in Jamaica, yes, you want to be running. <laughs> you and Paul the only other time I felt safe, breaks. I was scuba diving. That's the only other time I thought I wasn't going to get shot. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. We must go there. Yeah, Let's yeah. get the tourist yeah, board on the line. <laughs> pursue it. I said, buy my things. Oh, right. Nice to meet you, shopkeeper. <laughs> uh, this is called Bent Out of Shape. <laughs> is this a poet? <laughs> uh, no, no, this is a guy who's, who's uh, written to the pastor for help. You want to maybe describe the pastor there, uh, John? Uh, the pastor. He's got a nice big old beard. He does, doesn't he? A, two-to- a two-tone hair. beard. It's very, it's very black at the top. Do you have a problem? Is something bothering you? Write to Tell Me Pastor. <laughs> Dr. Aaron Dumas. Lovely and stuff. And then it's got his address. So it's kind of like an agony on section. With yes, here. exactly what it is. Now, right. here, here we go. This is Dear Pastor. I hope you can offer some advice and help on this. I am an 18-year-old male who has a serious problem, and you are the one that I trust deeply. Every time my penis is erect, it has a deep curve to the right. <laughs> And doing some research on this, I understand that there is a foreign tissue growing inside called Peyronie's disease. During sex, it is painful because I have to hold my penis while having sex due to the curve. And I'll get this. As a result, my sex partners always embarrass me in crowds. <laughs> just take a moment to reflect on that. Not just embarrass them or talk about their problem. Waiting until a crowd appears. Exactly. Yeah. Getting a loud hailer out. <laughs> just like to say, bend to the right. This guy here. Yeah. Now it uh, it goes downhill from here. When I say well, a curve, it goes downhill. Started off great. When I say a curve, I do not mean like a banana. <laughs> And to be fair, when I first started reading this, I thought, you know, he's got a curve in his penis. I wonder if he means like a banana. I pictured a banana. Sure. I was going to call him Banana Man. That's not what he means, John. Right. Mm, I mean a curve like a capital C. (laughs) Coming back on itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need your help and advice on what to do and how to go about doing things. Now, this is where he gets into the emotional uh, turmoil. When I have sex, I cry for many reasons. Oh. No. Not, not one or two, many. God, I wish I'd reasons. never written this letter now. Oh, first, uh, yeah, first, I cry because of the pain. Fair enough. Second, I cry because of the curve. Yeah. <laughs> And last but not least, I cry because I am embarrassed. <laughs> Most of the time, I am very stressed out, frustrated, and depressed, and it seems to me that I am an odd person in this world, and to tell you the truth, there has been no happiness in my life since I became a teenager. Once again, I trust you, and I wish you would give me some help on how to correct my curved penis. <laughs> Thank you. Pray for me, and he means it. <laughs> you sincerely, Boomer Wang. That's Jay in St. Anne, Jamaica. Now listen to the advice. Right, this okay, is- so what are we picturing in the minute? What, what's your first bit of advice? Um, just, uh, I don't know. That's my, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, in, yeah, up and back, because you don't want to just be a maimed vegetable. You want to end it. Yeah, you've got a what? curved penis. Take what? your own life. <laughs> what? My advice would be never run uh, around corners just in case you accidentally slip into something you shouldn't. My advice would be just to have a bit of fun with it. Yeah. You know, just enjoy yourself. We've all got, you know, get, if, if she's embarrassing you in front of a crowd, just oh, play on it. Great just go to have a look at this. I'd say wear goggles go to a fa- and turn your hand around when you're doing it. <laughs> go to a fairground, you know, the Hall of Mirrors, walk in and then come out going, well, that thing's ruined. Look what it's done to me. Implying that the mirrors <laughs> fangled you I want to speak to your lawyer. Yeah, 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 exactly. Look at this thing. What's his advice then? Dear Jay, well, this is Mr. Pastor, but he should be uh, state the obvious. What's lovely? That's what his name should be. There so. might be somebody at home who's got this affliction. Oh, and yeah. sat there And, they and need... we're laughing at them and, and saying they should take their own lives. But luckily, this is the advice they need. Peyronie's disease is a nightmare for men who are suffering from it. Thanks, Pastor. The cause is still unknown. In some cases, it comes as a result of an injury, but I must emphasize that this is not always the case. Some men who suffer from the disease find that it is impossible to have sexual intercourse. Okay. It is said that some men go to bed with normal functioning penises, but when they wake up, they discover that their penises are severely bent and intercourse becomes impossible. 
How bad can Peyronie's disease get? Question mark. Well, bad enough for doctors to describe severe cases in which the penis looks like a corkscrew. Now, oh. Yeah, yeah, a corkscrew. But I would say, John, I would argue that if my penis previously looked like a capital C, yeah. if I went into the hospital with a capital C penis and a doctor said, I can uh, turn it into a corkscrew, <laughs> I'd go with that. Yeah, yeah. I would, yeah. I'd, I'd say, can you put me under, like, immediately and get Could they do that? You like that? To be honest, you kind of go, as a recovering alcoholic, that's not good for me. The last thing I need to be is to open, <laughs> open wine bottles just like that. I don't need the reminder. Now, what if it was a small case, C? I'm not, you know, I, I have a different problem. What if it's not capital? You know, it's still C-shaped. He's kind of showing off there, going, looks like a C, but it's massive. Yeah, he hasn't told us what font it is, I think. <laughs> Might be in Italian. Yeah, yeah. So it's in <laughs> Old English, <laughs> see? It's in, bota it's in botanicals, I'm ruined. Jeez, you got a hat rack on no your No wonder she's laughing. Fella. It's Comic Sans. Wow. <laughs> now, on the other end of the spectrum, the bend may be very slight, not affecting the man's ability to have intercourse and no cause for concern. In mild cases of the disease, if there's any pain, it usually goes away on its own. All the doctor has to do is reassure the man that in two or three months, months all will be well. Now, here we go. Your condition seems to be severe and permanent. <laughs> Therefore, I suggest that you consult a urologist without delay. You need not be embarrassed. A urologist should be able to assist you. Don't move from woman to woman in an effort to see whether or not you are able to perform <laughs> with the condition you are suffering. Now, listen to this. This is phenomenal. Coming from a pastor, they'll continue to laugh at you and tell their friends that you are a time waster. <laughs> what an insane thing to insinuate. Guy with a capital C is a penis. Time waster. <laughs> it's a closed bracket at best. Right, that's fantastic. That's there you go, Craig Campbell. There you go, that's fantastic, Moby. Thanks very much for listening to the show. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we've had John Richardson, of always. Yes, hello. And we've had the fantastic Craig Campbell. Thanks for having me. It's, it's absolutely been a pleasure. pleasure, Craig. Um, so uh, download the podcast if you enjoy the show. It's half an hour, it's the best bits, basically. Um, and uh, next week, we've got the usual kind of gubbins and stuff like that. Usual we? gubbins, guests and chat and fun. And if you want to email us, it's russell.6music at bbc.co.uk. Check the website for the bot sketch. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Now, this is Reward by Teardrop Explode. See you later. This is 6Music.